So let me take you to the interesting world of quantum. We'll start with bit. It's the fundamental unit of classical information. It can be represented by a single binary value, 0 or 1. It exists in one of the either distinguished, you know, distinct states, as simple as me raising my right hand or lowering my right hand. Let's come to qubit. It's a fundamental unit of quantum information. It is allowed to exist simultaneously in two different distinct states. Let me help you imagine. Consider a two-level atom. The electron is in superposition of both the energy levels. It is represented by the probability cloud. This strange structure is called superposition. It reminds me of a cartoon in a physics book where a professor was asking a student Give me an example of superposition. And he came up with an idea of mermaid. Professor said, nobody has seen it. The boy says, the reason is, the moment anybody tries to observe the superposition state or the mermaid, it collapses to either being a girl or a fish. Speaking metaphorically, it is similar to the Schrodinger's cat of, a, of it being alive and dead at the same time. So we understand that when we try to look into a superposition state, it collapses to either one of the two states. Now we'll move to entanglement, and we will discuss some interesting facts about entanglement. What it is? So the measurement on one entity affects the state of the other. If the two particles are highly correlated, they lose their self-identity and they behave as a unified state. This is quantum entanglement. Let us explain this with an example. I'll give you two classical boxes, ordinary boxes. It is special in the sense that you can open each and every side of the box. In one box, you will put a red ball, and the other box, you will put a blue ball. We will do this experiment. We will open each side of the box and look at the color of the ball. I'm observing a property. When I'm opening the, the side of the box, I'm doing a measurement. Okay, it's the outcome of an event. So when I'm doing that, even if, even if I repeat this several times, I will always see red ball in the box one and blue ball in box two. This is the classical world. Now let me give you some magic boxes, two magic boxes, or quantum-powered boxes, and put two balls entangled with each other. They are colored balls, red and blue. Which means that I have ball one in magic box one, ball two in magic box two, and ball two in magic box one, and ball one in magic box two simultaneously. We do this exercise, we open door one of the magic box one and door one of the magic box two. I repeat this several times, what I observe, one. Whenever I'm seeing a red ball in magic box one, I'm seeing a blue ball in magic box two. Whenever I'm seeing a blue ball in magic box one, I'm seeing a red ball in magic box two. Third. I do not get the same result every time. It's either red and blue. This doesn't happen in the quantum, in the classical world. It is only possible in the quantum world. You see, you can see a correlation. So entangled states are correlated. Now we come to um, another interesting fact. How the measurement changes the state of the system. For that, what we do is, we'll open door two of magic box one, because I said that, Opening the door, it is, represents measurement. Door two is a different kind of measurement. In classical world, whichever door I was opening, I was always getting the same result. Very boring. 
But in quantum box, if I'm opening door two of magic box one and door two of magic box two, I can see the green and the yellow color. Alls have changed their colors, which is very fascinating and it is not possible in the classical world. So what did I say? The measurement affects the state of the uh, quantum state. So now we introduced to two superpowers. One is superposition and another is entanglement. Now let's see how these two superpowers are useful in the real world. Let's go for quantum computing first. We know that a quantum state can exist into many states simultaneously. So that gives me exponential computational power for a quantum computing device. Which means with one qubit, I have two alternating alternatives simultaneously. With two qubits, I have four alternatives simultaneously. With 100 qubits, I have two to the power 100 alternatives simultaneously. And I can do computation in all these states simultaneously. So this tells me that the storage capacity of a quantum register is exponentially higher than a classical register. Another fact, a quantum algorithm will be able to perform better than certain classical counterparts. Now let's explain this. Uh, you must have heard of RSA. It is the public key crypto system. It is used for secure data communication. It's a pragmatic approach to distribute the keys around the globe using internet to several parties. We have encryption key, decryption key, they both are different, asymmetric to each other. One is public, one is private. What is interesting is the security of RSA depends upon the difficulty in factoring the product of two large prime numbers. Why you should be concerned? Because the password in your credit card, national security, the entire digital infrastructure is based on these primitives. Now comes quantum. Now quantum algorithms, like the famous Shor's algorithm, it can solve this problem in polynomial time. What does that mean? A classical computer can crack and RSA 2048 in 300 trillion years, and a quantum computer with stable qubits can do it in 10 seconds. This is alarming. Today we even have a day named, it's called Q-Day, when a large-scale quantum computer will be able to break the RSA 2048, which is the largest known encryption key as of today. Let's move forward. We'll talk about supercomputing. Today we talk about exascale computing. What is it? These systems can perform quintillion calculations, computations in one second. That is one followed by 18 zeros. Quantum computer will go way beyond that. I'm also tempted to tell you that the future data centers, these are places where you house the supercomputers. Now, the future data centers is going to leverage the computational acceleration of the quantum computers. Okay, so the classical and the quantum is going to work together to deliver applications. Come to applications. I do not think there is any industry left. You know, each and every industry has some or the other computational problems, and quantum is going to affect more or less all of them, be it health sector, bioinformatics center, be it enhancing AI, machine learning, be it finance, be it banking, be it drug discovery, protein folding, optimization. optimization. There are several. So having looked at the impact which the quantum computers is going to bring in, we'll go to the other area, which is quantum communication. So here is our flying qubit. A qubit, as I earlier told you, it is the fundamental unit of quantum information. So whatever we do, we need to compute with qubit. When we want to communicate, we want to talk to two parties geographically separated, 
what I do is I generate single photons or quantum entities. Photons are flying qubits. Encode information because information is physical. And then I allow it to move from one geographical location to the other geographical location, either fiber or free space. And then decode the information and do a single photon measurement there. So this is communication. Why should I look into it? Why should I go for it? Well, look at the application. So quantum communication will play a very vital role in strategic applications to communicate data very securely. Then quantum internet, satellite QKD. Also, the security backbone of 60 technology is going to be on quantum communication. So this is the reason it is important. And it is also important to note that a quantum computing device is very different from a quantum communication device. In quantum a computing device, you generate photons, you process them, you execute some operations on them, you measure them. It's at one location. You can give jobs, algorithms over cloud, but they are executed at one place. But in communication, what happens? The qubit state flies from one, one place. place to the other and um, performs some protocols or tasks. Now let us look at the real world problem in cryptography. So we have historical evidence that whenever a technology, a new technology comes, it impacts the cryptographic methods. The present day cryptography was based on the security over a classical computer, which is 70 years old. We never knew about quantum computer at that time, but today we have a quantum computer which has computational advantage. And we have a lot many to think about. So this is going to be, it should be revised. That's what we are telling everybody and the government, that it's high time to relook at the communi secure communication structure. What are the problems or challenges in the classical world of cryptography? One major challenge is key distribution. See, key um, encryption keys, they are the Achilles heel. An adversary can know about the entire cryptographic system, the encryption algorithm, the hardware, but if they know the key, then it's gone. And in the classical world, there is no proven mechanism of transferring, distributing. I'm using the word distributing, means the key is generated and I'm distributing. There is no proven secure way of distributing encryption keys from one place to the other. How we do it? Public key uh, crypto system or trusted couriers. What are the challenges? Backdoors in the algorithms, vulnerability of the physical link, human intelligence, dependence on computational security, I'm bounded by the resources, and another, the quantum adversary, who can come with a quantum toolkit, with quantum computer, quantum memory, quantum algorithms like Shores, quantum assisted AI, which will help you in cryptanalysis. So there are a lot many challenges to the present day crypto system. How quantum will come to its rescue? In quantum, I'm encoding the information on the quantum state. It is protected by the laws of quantum mechanics. So let me say, keeping that in background, I'm saying the keys generated in this process cannot be cloned because quantum cannot be cloned. There's a no cloning theorem. Um, if somebody is trying to tamper the state, or if somebody is trying to observe or monitor the information, it gets tampered and I'll be able to detect it, which doesn't happen in the real world, in the classical world. And because of these superpowers called entanglement and superposition, there are certain laws in the quantum world, which protects the, um, the, the, the data when it is getting transferred from one place to the other. These laws have provided us a mechanism called quantum key distribution. It is a process of generating, generating simultaneously secure 
symmetric en encryption keys at two distant locations. So this um, is the idea of quantum key distribution. Uh, okay, I must add that this happens under the nose of an eavesdropper. In the classical world, I'm trying to hide. In the quantum world, I'm saying, come, I know that you are there, I'll be able to find it out. So that's the difference. Now, apart from that, there are other methods also, but let me give you some example. See, when uh, we'll do an experiment, you remember the magic box I told you. So we'll take that one quantum-powered magic box, and I'll put a red ball inside it. And I'll give it to you. You will have some choices. You can choose not to look at or not to open the box. Nice. Or you may want to randomly open door one or door two. So this is a condition of the game. You have already played this game because you had provided us with your inputs on the choices of these uh, you know, calls you want to take. What we would observe is... Okay, so what we would observe is, um, for those events where you have chosen not to open the boxes, for example, there were four cases, doesn't matter, it can be several. But in all those cases, whenever you give me the ba box back and I open door one, why do I open door one? Because I know I have put a red ball there. If I open door two, I may, I may see something else. So I will open door one and I will see it is red. So 100% outcomes will be red. I know that nobody has opened the box. Now we'll go for the second experiment where I think 38 uh, of us have chosen to open door one and 31 of us wanted to open the door two. In that case, what happens is, in that case, what happens is, there will be a 25% error. If there are 100 cases, I will be getting 25 of the times a blue ball and 75% of the time, red ball. So I know that 25% error occurrences of, back, of blue balls, considering my noise or other interferences are not there, ideal case, that the, somebody has monitored, somebody has tried to look into the system, or somebody has tried to do some measurement on the system, and the thief gets caught. So this is a basic idea behind quantum key distribution. See, another approach is post-quantum cryptography, which is coming out with those mathematical problems that cannot be solved over a um, quantum computer. And in future, these two approaches are going to coexist and give us a very robust cryptographic security um, combined with um, conventional state-of-art methods. So now we discussed what is quantum, what are the superpowers, what are the application areas, how it's going to impact our lives. So now it's time for a take-home message. So I would say that this technology is going to revolutionize our lives. It's going to impact our lives in big ways we cannot imagine. So let's be proactive. Let's get involved to understand what needs to be changed, how much it has to be changed, what has to be adapted, and finally, let us participate in this change. I would also like to show you the quantum computer. Um, that's a five qubit superconducting quantum computer. It's a European um, uh, quantum hardware industry, IQM. So it's starting off with five, but uh, you know, we have other computing uh, platforms giving us much more qubits. And I just told you, you know, the power, how it is going to increase. So I think the, the, uh, the urgency is there. And, and I let's hope that, that you all will join me in this, uh, in, in this change. Thank you.